spirits to stay, and help us to receive your good news. Let us pray. Oh God, we can hardly believe it. The Advent season is upon us. We usually translate that into the buying season in preparation for the big day. But when we place our hope in the tinsel and the wrappings, tape and boxes, Lord, we forget the most gracious gift of all, the gift of God's absolute love. Open our eyes, open our hearts, open our spirits today to behold God's gracious love for us in the fulfillment of all God's promises. For we ask this in the name of Jesus, the Christ child. Amen. Well, let us stand and begin our Advent journey with a couple of opening carols. Angels from the realms of glory, come thou long expected Jesus.
be seated. And I will invite at this time the Klein family to come forward for the lighting of our Advent wreath, the candle of hope. Today is the beginning of Advent, the preparation time for celebrating Christ's birth. We are here because God's promises to our ancestors came true when Jesus was born. God's promise is kept each Sunday when we worship because Christ is in our midst. God will keep the promise to come again in glory. From Isaiah chapter 60, verse 2, for darkness shall cover the earth and thick darkness the peoples, but the Lord will arise upon you and his glory will appear over you. We light this candle to proclaim the coming of the light of God into the world. With the coming of this light, there is hope. Because of Christ, we are not only, we not only have hope, but we believe that good is stronger than evil. God wants us to, to work for good in this world. Let us pray. O oh God, we thank you that Jesus brought hope into our world. By the good news of the Bible, you are still bringing hope to people. Help us to be ready to welcome Jesus Christ so that we may think good thoughts and do good deeds, and so that we may be a people of hope in our world. Amen. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Let us pray. Loving Creator, you call us to rejoice in your promise of the birth that is to come, but we are afraid. You invite us into a world where justice and righteousness prevail, but we turn away in fear. We long for an easy path into your promised world, but you warn us that there is no easy way. Birth new life within us, Holy One, that we may abide in your perfect love, the love that casts out fear. Amen. The days are coming, says the prophet Isaiah, when all God's promises will be fulfilled. These promises of hope, peace, joy, and love are for you. Rejoice the hope that God offers you. Receive the hope that God offers you today. Amen. This is a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, uh, chapter 2, beginning at the first verse. This is what Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as the highest of mountains. 
It will be exalted above the hills, and all nations will stream to it. Many peoples will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways, so that we may walk in his paths. The law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many peoples. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Come, house of Jacob, let us walk in the light of the Lord. This is the 122nd Psalm. I rejoice with those who said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing in your gates, Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built like a city that is closely compacted together. That is where the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, to praise the name of the Lord according to the statute given to Israel. There stand the thrones for judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you be secure. May there be peace within your walls and security within your citadels. For the sake of my friends and of all the people, I will say, peace be with you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your prosperity. This is the word of the Lord. Loving God, we give you thanks for this season of preparation and waiting, as it helps us to be ready for your coming. You're coming into our world, coming into our lives, to rehear the message that is so important for us to hear. It's a message of love, it's a message of reconciliation, it's a message of peace, hope, and certainly joy. And Lord, we confess that we forget those meanings to the season. We get caught up in all of the busyness that pervades. Forgive us for those moments. But even in those moments, Lord, may we find joy of family and friends and love among those that are closest to us. We give you thanks that as a church family, we can celebrate the joys and concerns of our lives with one another. We lift up to you the Cheney family. We lift up to you Wendy and Grandma Pat. 
We lift up to you Mary and her family as they rejoice at new birth. And Lord, we give you thanks and praise for prayers answered in our C's life. And Lord, we ask for your spirit to go before him. Prepare the way that he might find great success in all that he does. And his influence would be received. We thank you, Lord, for the ministries of our church and for those willing to step up and to, to, be in, to lead these things like community dinners, giving trees, Lord, that your love may enter into our community. We lift them, all of these things up to you, Lord. We lay them before your throne, knowing that you hear us, and we know that you can do more than we can ever ask or imagine. Be with us in this season, I pray, in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Our lesson comes from the Gospel according to Matthew, beginning with the 36th verse of the 24th chapter. Hear God's word. But about that day and hour, no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field. One will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together. One will be taken and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready. For the Son of Man is coming and an unexpected hour. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You have heard me say it before, and you've heard it from others before me. Advent marks the beginning of a new year, a new church year. So it's right that I say, Happy New Year to you. However, what is interesting about the first Sunday of Advent is that each and every year, this particular Sunday focuses not on the beginning, but on the end. Today we begin reading Matthew's Advent message, but instead of starting at chapter 1, verse 1, we go almost to the very end, to chapter 24. We begin at the end. I have a question for you. How many of you would read a book and start by going nine-tenths of the way through the book and starting there? Probably not. But that's exactly what we're doing as we work through Matthew this season. We begin at the end. However, from the standpoint of Christian theology, the understanding of our faith, it's fitting that we do this. Unlike some Eastern religions that view time as an endless cycle of birth, death, and rebirth, Christianity has its roots in Judaism. And from that standpoint, we see history as moving toward an end. There is a goal. There is a consummation that is coming. God created all that is, and God's purpose is to redeem, to recreate all that's been marred by sin and injustice in this world. And so therefore, Christians live in hope. We live in hope of that consummation. That will be an end. But it will also be a new beginning. Another way Christians have put it is that we look forward to Christ's return at the end of history. We who regard the advent of Christ in the child born in Bethlehem some 2,000 years ago now live in hope of Christ's second 
coming, his second advent. And so being people who live in hope, we always begin the new church year looking toward the end. And so our lesson today from Matthew is a portion of Jesus' final teaching to his disciples. Here Jesus teaches his companions how they must live between his resurrection and his return. And in Jesus' words before us today, I can hear an Advent message for us. And maybe you too. I can especially hear it in one great charge that Jesus gives his disciples. The charge is to wake up. Wake up. Say it with me. Wake, wake up. up. Have you ever had that instruction given to you before? Wake up. Now, I am sure that all of our teenagers here this morning get up the very first time their parents call them, right? Oh, uh-huh, uh-huh. I'm not sure about that. I'll talk to your folks afterwards. Well, not me. Not me. I was awful about getting up when my mom called. AJ, wake up. You're going to be late for school. Well, that would quickly turn to Adrian. I've called you five times. Wake up. You're going to be late. And guess what? A little secret. My poor wife fights with me every morning. But guess what? It only begins with Adrian. And believe me, I wake up the second time. Wake up, says Jesus. Wake up. There's a couple of things in this lesson this morning that Jesus says we as his disciples should awaken to. We should awaken to living with mystery. Living with mystery. As we await Christ's advent at the end, we have the instruction from Jesus that we are to wake up to the reality that we must live with some amount of mystery. Verse 36. But the exact day and hour? No one knows that. Not even heaven's angels. Not even the Son. Only God knows. The theme of not knowing pervades this passage. Four times in this verse, Jesus speaks of the mystery that surrounds this return. And yet, despite this clear teaching of Jesus about this second advent, so many Christians have not awakened to living with mystery, have they? Rather, some speculate about when Jesus is going to return, and we know how that usually ends up. Whole theologies, whole denominations have come to be out of these end time speculations. These attempts to decipher when Jesus will come again. And this has all been done despite the fact that Jesus explicitly said, no one knows. In fact, Jesus says something really is astounding here. He says, not even the Son knows. Did you know that this thought, not the sun, was even there? Do you know it was hard for some of the early translators of the Bible to believe that that was even true? You have to go way back to the really early manuscripts to actually find this phrase, not even the sun. You have to go back to the earliest manuscripts of Matthew to recapture that phrase that not even Jesus knows. Even Jesus has to live with some mystery. But what I think here is really saying to us, it's really punctuating the point. No one knows. That's the point. But we don't like that, do we? We don't like living with mystery. We like certainty. We like things nailed down. We like to be in control. We like to be in the know. But Jesus makes it clear that we have to wake up. Wake up to the call to live lives with some mystery, some not knowing. Bible scholar Frederick Dale Bruner, writing on this passage, says that true orthodoxy here is sanctified ignorance. 
That's what Jesus beckons us to wake up to in this season of Advent. A kind of holy ignorance that is able to live with mystery. You know, I used to want to know all the answers to so many things, especially all the answers to those great why questions. But I'll tell you, the older I've gotten, the more I have come to accept living with mystery in my life. There are just some things I do not know. There are things that I will not ever know, cannot know, and quite frankly, I don't need to know. And in accepting this mystery, there comes a certain peace. A peace that enables me to live with faith. A faith that sustains all the whys of life. A faith that can then make a difference in this world that we're born into today. If you were to ask those really smart religious people out there, the Latin scholars and the Catholic theologians, to describe this passage of scripture from Matthew, they would likely use the phrase mysterium fidei. Mysterium fidei. In English, that means mystery of faith. And beneath that category of mystery of faith would be things like the Trinity, things like the virgin birth, things like the resurrection. In other words, everything that remains kind of incomprehensible to us is described as mysterium fidei. What would it mean for us? What would it mean for us this Advent to awaken to living with mystery. Perhaps it would mean less anxious, being less anxious about the holidays, being perfect. Maybe it would allow us to be freer to live into those less than perfect moments upon which real memories are built. Perhaps it would mean joyful accepting the gifts that in so many ways are already in our lives instead of bemoaning the so-called gifts that we just can't afford. Perhaps it would mean less running from party to party, less scurrying from store to store, and more pondering this God of ours becoming flesh and dwelling among us in an infant named Jesus. Wake up, says Jesus, to living with the unknowing and mystery of life. And therefore, live. Live with sustaining faith. Say it with me. Wake up. Another thing that Jesus says that we as his disciples should awaken to is living with expectation. Verse 42. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. Living with expectation is the flip side, the other side of the coin of living with mystery. Living with expectation is to live with an eye toward the end that we don't know when is going to happen. It's to develop this art of watchfulness in life. Paying attention so that we're prepared for that day. Yes, we need to get comfortable with mystery, for certainly uncertainty is a condition of our faith. But we must not let our unknowing devolve into some kind of uncaring. We must live aware and alert to the message of Advent. In Matthew's passage before us today, he uses two analogies to describe this sudden advent of the Messiah. And he compares it to the flood, and he compares it to a thief. And in both of these, Matthew emphasizes its unexpected appearance for an unprepared people, carrying on with business as usual. The scripture says, For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark. 
And they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. That's the point of the story of Noah here. People were going on about their business as usual, eating their daily meals, getting married, having kids, celebrating birthdays and graduations. Nothing really bad. All good stuff. Just going on about life. But unlike Noah, these folks were doing this with little or no thought of the God who created them. The God who could deliver them. And the flood came. They were caught off guard in their business as usual. And the same is true of the thief analogy. Verse 43. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. The homeowner was oblivious, nonchalant, uncaring, and his house was broken into. Matthew's Advent message is clear. Live with expectancy. Yes, recognize that there is mystery surrounding this return of the Lord, but don't be lulled into indifference. That is one of the real spiritual dangers of the season for us as Christians. The danger of indifference to the true meaning of Advent and Christmas. It's so easy to be lulled into the materialistic of apathy that is evident in this holiday in our culture. It's so tempting to Settle for the countdown of the shopping days till Christmas instead of numbering each day of Advent with care and pondering the greatest gift of Christ's birth. It's so enticing to think only of what I want in my stocking rather than taking stock of what the needs of others around me might be. It's so alluring to settle into my comfy circle of family and friends and forget that when Christ first appeared, there was no room for him in the end. And the angel who announced his birth appeared to poor and marginalized shepherds. Wake up, says Jesus. Be prepared. Don't be lulled into indifference this December by your business as usual celebration of the season. Stand on tiptoes as you await the advent of the mystery. Behold, your Lord is coming to make all things new. Stand ready for his appearing. Wake up. Say it with me. Wake up. I want to leave you with a story that suggests the attitude we might take with us as we enter into this season. Roland Elmudson was a Norwegian explorer who led one of the first expeditions to the South Pole. In 1911, upon making it to Antarctica, he left a portion of his crew there to begin explorations. And before he could return, the ice pack set in earlier than expected. It appeared that his crew would have to brave the winter in Antarctica, where temperatures regularly reached below 60 degrees, negative 60 degrees. Almussen made three attempts to reach them, and finally, as the winter broke, he got to his men. He asked how they had kept their morale up during this whole ordeal. It was simple, he was told. Each morning, the leaders would rally the men to get up and prepare for the captain's arrival. They would get up, prepare breakfast, eat, get their gear ready to be picked up, and they would wait. If captain did not come today, they knew that he would come tomorrow. That he would not come was not even a thought that was entertained in anyone's mind. And the day that Elmutsen finally broke through the ice pack and arrived, he found his men ready to be rescued. When our Lord will arrive is a mystery that we must live with. But let us be prepared. Let us live with expectancy of this Advent any day now as we minister to the needs of this world. That's where our focus needs to be.
ministering, being faithful, bringing peace and goodwill in our words and our deeds. On this Advent journey, we are a journey of mystery, expectancy, hope, love, peace, and joy. Wake up. Take notice. Jesus is coming to the glory of God and all God's people said. Covenant to be our sovereign God. 
and spoke to us through your prophets who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. When nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent in the fullness of time to be a light to the nations. You scatter the proud in the imagination of their hearts and have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You put down the mighty from their thrones and exalt those of low degree. You fill the hungry with good things and the rich you send up empty. Your own son came among us as a servant to be Emmanuel, your presence with us. He humbled himself in obedience to your will and freely accepted death on the cross. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to God, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to God, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God. Christ is risen. Christ is the man. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us gathered here and upon these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one in Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray as our Lord taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. The body of Christ broken for you and I. The blood of Christ poured out for us. those who are assisting the communion to come forward this way.
Brothers and sisters, the table is prepared. At this table, all of you are welcome. Come and receive. And when the supper was over, they sang a song together. And so let us stand now and sing All Earth is Waiting, number 210. are real. Go now into God's world, trusting in God's love and placing your hope in God. Go in peace. Amen. <laughs>